what is she saying? I'm saying that none of us are authentic and we are taught to not be authentic. That is what I'm here to say. Christianity teaches you to not be authentic, to not be yourself, to not look at the roots, to not connect with your inner child, to not face the truth, to not live in the mucky stuff, to not go there ever once, not ever, never, 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 not once ever. Okay, that's the intro to this episode. Thank you. Yeah, I'm already switching the deconstruction therapy thing. And damn you, Kyle Cease, it's because of you. <laughs> Let me explain. So I was listening to this Kyle Cease video, and he was talking about the, the branches and the roots. I'll link it in the description. If you're listening on YouTube, you can see it there. He was talking about the fact that, you know, we live... We pretty much live avoiding our true selves. You're an asshole, Kyle. Because I realized that I was still trying to do like a two, three steps removed thing when really I should just be talking about my actual experience instead of doing some weird what I thought in my head to be like oh this is like IFS this is like um parts work so it's like I'm playing the therapist and I'm playing myself and it's like just just tell the damn story you're getting three views anyways (laughs) just tell the damn story and I blame Kyle Cease because he's an asshole number one (laughs) Number two, because what he said was right, and that's why he's an asshole, because he was talking about the fact that we will literally do, I'm paraphrasing, we will literally do everything in our power to avoid going to the actual roots of who we are. We've trained ourselves that growth is up. Growth is also down. Growth is expanded. Growth is in the legs, in the womb, in the colon in the pelvis. It's everywhere. It's not just up, avoiding the down. It's in the core of the earth. It's in the ground. It's in the roots that hold the trees. Think of the trees just focusing on the branches versus the roots. I get to get more branches. If only I could get, I get every other branch to see me and you don't even care about the other trees roots. You don't care about your roots. You don't care about anything. That's actually what is the foundation of the freaking trees. You're just like up better, more trees see me. Then I'm number one. Then I have a successful business that the other branches all are all celebrating my branches and it's just surface nothing. The roots is the new focus the roots that we've ignored, that we have to look through our childhood trauma, everything, our abandonment, our physical abuse, our molestation, our everything that we went through as kids, whatever it is, because it's there. So you can ignore it and keep looking la 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 up, or you can ground yourself into the roots of what you are. And let that kid that has had to keep this from happening over and over and over again, come to light. So you don't actually keep manifesting what you're hiding. We all have this scared inner child pissed in their pants, again, paraphrase, inside of us. Hi, my name is Missy Gordon, and I'm I'm pissing my pants. I mean, my God, I'm pissing my pants right now on camera. You just can't see it. I'm just kidding. Okay. Oh, my God. She's, like, (laughs) fucking weird. (sighs) Of course I'm fucking weird. Okay? If you went through a deconstruction of your entire worldview had absolutely no idea who you were, you'd be a little weird too. You'd be a little wacky as well. Also, this necklace is kind of choking me out a little bit. Maybe I'm into that. Fuck you. Okay, anyways. It's three minutes in. <laughs> Basically, all I've said so far is fuck Kyle C's. And I'm, I'm into... Uh... <laughs> This is why I was trying to make this creative because all I do is just avoid, 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 avoid. And that's my point.
Got to make sure you can see the logo on the cup in the camera. Minimistic show. <laughs> when I was listening to Kyle's video, I was thinking about what he was saying. He was talking about the fact that we avoid the roots. We avoid the messy stuff. And we stay up in the branches. We stay up in, oh, I want my business to be amazing. I want my angles. I, I should just show you guys right now. Hold on. Let me take a picture. I'm going to insert the picture of what I've done here. And fuck you again, Kyle. You're an asshole, and you know it. This is what it looks like right now, okay? Remember to insert the photo, editing Missy. Okay. He talked about the fact that we, we stay up in the upper half. Like, we stay up in the branches, jazz fingers. Because it's much easier that way, to stay in, in the egoic. But if we're up there, we're literally, like, detached, and I will admit openly that I have been completely detached from myself for my entire fucking life. Okay? And that's what I'm here to talk about today. Kyle sees. Okay? Is the fact that I have been in avoidance my entire life of who I really am. I have not spent one day of my fucking life being myself or looking at myself. Why? Okay, well, let's backtrack. Why is that, Missy? Why is that Christian community that we all do this, not just me? Okay, don't, don't play coy now. Don't be playing coy now. You all, you all know. You, you got the tie so tight. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> Centering myself. We are taught from a very early age, if you were raised in Christianity, to detach from yourself and to stay in the branches and to best, it's best not to go down into those roots, down into the yucky stuff. Because if you go down into that yucky stuff, you're going to find bad stuff. Real bad stuff. And for some people, real bad stuff. Right? Like dark web stuff. You know what I'm saying? YouTube, you better not kick me off. I've got shit to say. Okay? I'm, I'm saying... Uh, I'm saying that we are taught from an early age... Or whenever you came into the cult that is modern Christianity, I'll say it. Okay. We are taught to not connect with the roots. Okay. We are taught to not connect with ourselves. Who we really are. What's really going on in there. The scared little child. Literally crying in the corner. I mean, that was me. When I was a kid, I literally slept in my parents' room until I was 11 years old on the chair. I slept on the freaking rocking chair in my parents' room. And I would put on my mom's Walkman. Yeah. Right? And I would blast worship music and I'd sing the worship music and my dad would get angry at me. He'd be like, shh. Why did I do that? Because I was fucking terrified to sleep alone. Well, Missy, that's normal. Lots of kids feel that way. But why? Why is it? Well, because, people, you know, kids believe there's monsters under their bed and stuff. See, for me, I, I was taught that Santa Claus was not real when I was a kid, for example. I knew monsters were made up, right? So for me, it wasn't, oh, I'm scared there's a monster. I'm scared there's... I knew and saw with my own eyes very specifically there was this tall as tall as the ceiling dark figure that would stare at me from the corner of my room that at the time I said was a demon and I was terrified literally pissing my pants literally shivering under my fucking covers and then my parents would get angry at me because they thought I was just being a nuisance. Love and light, mom and dad. Okay. 
you know, I probably wouldn't have known what to do with me either. But that said, when I was a child, immediately coming into this life, I didn't, I felt like I did not belong here. Nobody ever knew what I was talking about. I had all of these weird paranormal experiences. My God, this is way too fucking tight. <laughs> I mean, you know, I like some kinky stuff, but that was a little too kinky for me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> take, take it down a few, uh, a few notches here. Damn it. She's a freak. She's a super freak. Super freak. Make sure you got to show the logo. Get all the right angles. Again, fuck you, Kyle C's. Making me self-conscious. You're a Virgo too. Don't give me that shit. I know, you, I know Virgos. You're checking your logo too, and we all know it. Okay. Enough shade at Kyle C's. I love him. He's one of my mentors. What am I saying? <laughs> What is she saying? I'm saying that none of us are authentic and we are taught to not be authentic. That is what I'm here to say. Christianity teaches you to not be authentic, to not be yourself, to not look at the roots, to not connect with your inner child, to not face the truth, to not live in the mucky stuff, to not go there ever once, not ever, never, 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 not once ever. Okay, that's the intro to this episode. Thank you. This rocking chair that I'm sitting in right now, it's Amish made, you know. I got it in New Hampshire at a small shop. I've had it for years. This this beautiful thing here, the Amish make it built to last, I will say, first of all. Second of all, this chair has been my prayer chair for many years. I still have it today. I spent so many hours in this chair, not just praying, but seeing visions, understanding what I considered to be the truth about life, the truth about God, the truth about myself. This is the irony. I thought more than anybody in the world that I knew myself. I thought I was the most authentic I could possibly be. I spent hours a day asking God to... (laughs) See, and this is the complex part. It's like I would spend hours a day asking God to reveal himself to me. When in reality, I should have been praying for God to reveal myself to me. Okay, that that's what I'm here to talk about today. Who the hell are you? Who am I? That is what happened. That's the first thing that truly happened for me when my faith deconstructed aside from just like a complete mental freaking breakdown right aside from that what happened for me was I'm like oh my god I thought I was like the most authentic person in the entire world and I'm a fraud I'm a phony I'm I'm not the person I even thought I was I didn't even know who I was because, like Kyle talked about, watch that video, link in the description. He talked about the fact that we we don't go there, you know? We don't want to go there. We want to stay up in the branches. We want to stay up in, in the egoic, in the the bigger the business, the bigger the balls, right? The, the, the more money, the more confidence, and, and he was not even talking in, like, a um, spiritual context. He was just talking about in general. I'm talking about in specifically in the niche of the Christian church, the modern Christian church. Let me be spe- specific, because like I said about this Amish chair, the Amish would, would literally be, like, looking at me with, with a furled brow right now, what I'm saying. They're, the Amish are, like, not even part of the category that I'm speaking on right now and that's another point it's like you can go to one church and there will be a set of beliefs you can go to a church down the block completely different set of beliefs nobody agrees on anything and everybody thinks they're right everybody's just measuring dicks like in any other industry in the world so I don't want to hear it Christians, I don't want to hear your your jacked up view of reality where you're saying, oh, we're authentic. Oh, praise the Lord. 
we're we're who we are and that's who we say we are and that's who we are. It's like you're not saying anything. You're just repeating turn of phrase, turn of phrase, turn of phrase. We are who we are because it's who God says we are and who God says we are is who we say we are and who we say we are is who they say we are and who they say we are is who we It's like you're literally you're like you're malfunctioning. Okay? I'm blowing out my microphone. <laughs> Oh my god. I wish I had my freaking rose in here. That's usually the microphone that I use to sing a tune. I'm feeling a hymn coming on, praise the Lord. I won't. I'll refrain. The first question I honest to God asked myself when I looked at myself in the mirror after my deconstruction was, who am I? You would think that that would be a a simple question, you know, uh, people would probably say things like if they're asked the question, who am I? They would think, well, who am I? Well... I'm a nurse, you know, or I'm a lawyer, or I'm a mother, I'm, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, I'm, I'm a wife, I'm who, you know, whatever, whoever, people are going to list their things that they are. But those are just attributes. Those are not who we are. Well, it is, it's who I, it is to me. It's who I am because God says I am and who God says I am. And who, you don't have to be a Christian. We're all a bunch of bullshitters is my point. It doesn't matter if you came from the church or not. Like Kyle said, we're all a bunch of bullshitters. And he didn't say this. He's probably thinking it though. (laughs) But he has too many people watching him to say it. (laughs) Because I know you comedians. You You don't fool me. Comedians are my favorite type of folk. Why is this just a a freaking Kyle Cease piece? I don't I don't know. <laughs> this was not my intention. Then again, I was listening to that book Steal Like an Artist, and it was talking all about this. It's like I saw that video in all seriousness, you guys, and I do love Kyle and he is one of my main mentors. But I will say that I was listening to that book Steal Like an Artist, and it talks about th- this sort of a concept where you know, you you're taking something that already exists and then you're like iterating upon that thing. So I'm taking a video that really deeply spoke to me and made me think like, damn, even on these videos, I'm still not authentic. I'm still trying to make it like more interesting or something. It's like, I just need to be my freaking self. And this is me. This is me. Right now, in this freaking moment. And the reality is, I don't like that. I always want things to look better than they are. Why? Because I don't want to look at myself. That's the reality. And my point today is talking about the fact, specifically in Christianity, it's everywhere, but specifically in Christianity, I was taught to not look at myself in fact it's like you you look at yourself and you 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 throw that blood of jesus all over that because that is a goddamn mess you know and, and you better take some communion you know eat some flesh drink some blood <laughs> that's cannibalism yup absolutely Absolutely, freaking and you, you just you just wash that authenticity down with some blood. The blood of Christ. And make sure you never look at that thing again. Because that's worth hell. That's worth damnation. We believe as Christians that who we are, not only is it not good enough, But it's evil and it's wrong and it deserves hell. And the only reason we're not going there is because our Savior was brutally fucking murdered 
so that you nasty thing didn't have to go to hell. Praise the Lord. Pass the offering basket. It's like, no wonder why I can't make a damn video just just talking about my my story because I was taught don't ever tell your story don't ever talk about the truth the only time you 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 tell the truth is when you're asking for prayer you know what I'm saying and when you're telling your accountability partner that you you screwed up you know what I'm saying in Christianity it's never okay to be yourself that is my point And that has been one of the most complex things that I've had to start unpacking and getting to the roots on within my own self is the fact that I was self-averse, right? Like, everything about me was wrong. And I'm not just saying me. I'm saying in Christianity, this is what it is. Everything about you is wrong. You can't original sin, not only you, but your great, 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 grandfather Adam and Eve. <laughs> we won't even get to Lilith on this episode. Now, she was the original, but oh, never mind. He took a second wife because she, she, he needed somebody to be a little some more submissive. You know what I'm saying? Missy Stan topic. <sighs> what I'm saying is it's not only like... It's, it's complex. They make it so complex that we don't even know what we're talking about anymore. All we know is that we're a worthless piece of shit that deserves to burn in hell consciously, eternal conscious torment for all of eternity, suffering, skin being ripped off your freaking face like a Terminator scene. You remember that? It's like for all of eternity, Right? Because you watch the Terminator movie. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, this is freaking crazy, dude. And this has been, out of all the stuff that I've had to deconstruct, this has been the thing that I'm still chewing on. And I probably will be chewing on for a long time to come. I didn't fart. I moved my light. So... Here I am to say, here's to, like, just being us. Like, you don't, and, oh my God, I'm already correcting, like, a hundred things about what I'm going to say. It's like, because some people, if you say, it's great to just be you, it's like, okay, yeah, but if you're, like, a serial killer, I'm not talking about freaking serial killers. I'm just talking about a regular person that works at Walmart, okay? Okay. I'm just talking about normal ass people. I'm not talking about the freaking Zodiac killer, okay? I'm talking about Susan that works down at Walmart. Just living her life, okay? Watching animal videos on her break. Regular old Susan that the Christian church says is going to burn in hell for all of eternity. Praise the Lord. Pass the offering basket. I haven't even known where to begin because my first memories were that I am not okay number one like I'm not okay like at all like I should be terrified to exist right now number one Second of all, not only should I be freaking terrified to exist, but every single thing about me is worthless and wrong and evil. Let's not even say wrong, evil. Worthy of eternal damnation and torment. Just just playing with some toys on the floor in the family room. Just just a kid, just chilling. Worthy of eternal damnation and torment for all of eternity. Burning in the flames. Your bones disintegrating. And then they just regenerate again. And then they disintegrate again. And just, you know, <laughs> just a light afternoon uh, soap opera on the tube, you know. 
I don't even, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm just saying. Okay. I felt like every breath I took. Okay. I was in danger. Even after I was saved. That's my point. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Because it doesn't matter that you're saved. Well, sister, what are you talking about? If you're saved with the blood of the lamb, you're going to heaven. Yeah, but that th you didn't read the fine print, okay? Because if what what happens if you if if uh, what what happens if uh, s s uh, brother Samuel over there watches a little Pornhub? What happens then? Well, he's in trouble. What do you mean he's in trouble? I thought I thought he was going to heaven with Jesus. Yeah, but you know you can't do that stuff. Oh. Well, what else can I do? Well, you can't swear. <laughs> you can't wear, you know, booby tops. You can't... <laughs> what else can you do? <laughs> I mean, you can't really do much of anything now that I think of it. Wait, actually, you do have a point. Uh, what are we saying? Exactly. What are we saying? What, what are we saying? Nobody knows what we're saying. That's the point. That's the point of control, the control of religion. It's tithes and offerings... And it's control, and not the sexy kinds. Okay? It's the kind that you keep people in fear so you can control them, and you don't have to pay taxes on your money. Okay, sorry. <clears throat> I'm reading it in. I'm reading it in, folks. The point of this episode is to say the hardest thing for me to come to terms with is the fact that I have never once been okay with myself. I, I haven't known how to sit with myself and yet I sat for six hours a freaking day in this chair that you see me sitting in right now praying. I thought that that was me being with me, me and the Holy Spirit, praying for the world, praying for myself, connecting with the Lord. I thought that I was just cool with myself, that I could sit alone for hours with myself, come to find that wasn't true at all. It was a freaking delusion because when my faith deconstructed and I tried meditation, I could barely sit still for 30 fucking seconds because it was me with me. It was the real me with the real me. It wasn't the fake me, the holy me that was praying for six hours that felt like subconsciously like what I'm doing is so good right now. What I'm doing is so good right now. I didn't even know I was thinking that. That's how deluded I was. That I didn't I, I was feeding myself with the fact that I'm okay. I'm okay because I'm doing this. I'm not going to hell because I'm doing this. And not only am I not going to hell because I'm doing this, I'm going to be counted worthy among the elect because I'm doing this. Completely subconscious. Was not thinking that. I mean, yes, in a way I was thinking that because I just said it to you. I was conscious that that was a thing. But... <sighs> When I was walking through Walmart and I wasn't praying, I felt uncomfortable. The second I wasn't praying anymore and I was just with myself walking through Walmart, I was not okay again. And so I'd think, so I'd start praying under my breath. I'd start praying in tongues under my breath. I'd start thinking, what, what things can I do? Well, it's not by work, sister. It's by grace that you are saved through Christ. Okay, yeah. Absolutely, I hear you. I hear what you're regurgitating. But what I'm saying is when you're laying awake at night in your bed, okay, and, and you're actually thinking about all your problems, like, let's have a conversation when you're in that state, not when you're in your holier-than-thou Bible-thumping state. When you're in a state of disarray, let's have a conversation, okay? Well, I don't ever get in a state of disarray, sister, because I have the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength, <laughs> can't even talk to you can't even have a conversation can't look these people in the eye their eyes are there's something funny there I'm telling you something funny behind the eyes all right okay well now you're just making fun of christians damn straight i am because like paul said i was among the pharisees of the pharisees and in normal person language what paul was saying was that he was a religious leader and he spent his entire life becoming that 
okay? He was the the top of the top. You couldn't have convinced the guy otherwise. He literally was killing Christians because that's how much he believed in Judaism. He was anti-Christ, literally. And when he was converted, he said to his group, I was a Pharisee among Pharisees. So basically what he was saying was, for me to be converted, that proves that Jesus is really the Messiah. So in a really fucked up roundabout way, what I'm saying, using Paul's words, is I'm saying I was a Christian among the Christians. Like there was nothing else for me. I was very weird. Okay, there was nothing else on my radar. I would not watch TV. Okay, I was alone most of the time. I was a hermit. I was a monk. Right? Like, I had no friends. I spent all my time praying and reading the Bible and reading books. The only people I talked to were my parents. I gave my entire life to bolstering up my dad's ministry because I thought that that was what I was supposed to be doing. I did not even think past my 30th birthday. One side of me didn't think past my 30th birthday because I thought, do not dare censor me, YouTube. You hear me? One side of me thought I wouldn't make it until my 30th birthday because I thought I would kill myself by then. That's the one side. That's the dark side. That's the shadow self. YouTube was like, oh, don't, don't try us. We'll come get ya. How many choke jokes am I going to make in this freaking video? God. On the one hand, I didn't think I would, I didn't think past my 30th birthday. I'm turning 32 on August 30th, by the way. I didn't think past my 30th birthday on one hand because there was a side of me that was suicidal. Okay, but on the other side, I didn't think past my 30th birthday because I was just so dead locked on what I was doing that day and just focusing so much on like how I could give more, how I could do more to to give my life for Christ. I didn't think about what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like the only thing to do was for me to be a minister. There was no other option. There was no other choice. There was, I didn't think about marriage. I didn't think about children. I didn't think about hobbies. I didn't think about anything, even down to my music, which has always been a hobby for me. I only thought about it as a way to use it as a tool to worship Jesus with. I didn't think of it as just like, oh, I can just, I like playing guitar, I like playing piano, I like singing, I like writing songs, because those are things that I enjoy. No, I was thinking that I enjoy these things because they are a tool for God's glory. Okay, so it's just everything always went back to that. I didn't have one original thought. I did not have one hobby. I did not have one friend. I did not have one anything even thinking about like oh I can't wait to have an ice cream sundae Friday night it's like that to me was a thought of the flesh and this is the crazy part and this is a hard subtlety to put into words I wasn't I wasn't Amish going back to my Amish chair I wasn't Amish I was a modern Christian. I was a Hillsong, Bethel, kind of hip, sort of smoke on the stage, sort of a Christian. Like, I, it's not like I was some sort of, um, and love and light to the Amish. I'm just saying, it's, it's, what I'm saying is so subtle because I'm exposing to you guys stuff that just was. It just was the way my life was, but you never would have known it because I would like act normal around people. Like I knew how to talk. I wasn't an idiot. I knew how to like appear normal to other people. Like I've, I'm very self-aware. I've always been self-aware. So nobody ever would have known. I never let people get past that first layer 
And that's the point of today's episode. I wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare let myself go past that layer. Any desires I had, any thoughts, any hobbies, any interests, any any projections of the future even. It's like I worked a part-time job and I put all of that money into my dad's offering basket. Okay? Love and light, dad. But that's what happened. And I felt like that was amazing that I was doing that. You know, I didn't have any autonomy, and that's nobody's fault but my own. But I am here today to also talk about the fact that this is so much bigger than me. This is just what they teach. And that's why I'm trying to say it's like, even in like the hip churches with the smoke, with the with the cool youth pastor, like the the I was part of the church the side of the church that other sides of the church thought were sinful like they thought they were like progressive christians i was part of that and yet look at how i'm talking because it's subliminal watch the hillsong documentary you'll see a lot of accounts excuse me in that documentary about people that are saying similar things it's like it seems one way on the surface but when you start digging down into that rabbit hole you will start to see those fundamentalist roots where you are not allowed to be yourself. God forbid. Because anything that is authentic, anything that's true, anything that's you at all is worthy of hellfire. So sitting alone with myself, even though I thought I was doing that every single day for six hours a day, 30 seconds has been challenging for me because I feel like now that I'm my true self and there are no fancy layers of protection and I'm doing the right thing and I'm praying and I'm doing all these things that makes God love me. Oh, sister, it's not about making God love you. God loves you as you are. No, Brandon Manning said this. God loves you as you are, not as you should be, because no one's as they should be. And you know what? I I do respect Brendan Manning, but I will say even upon Brendan Manning's comment, I will make another comment and say... We haven't really met ourselves as Christians. And so I'm introducing myself to myself every single day. I'm finding out who I even am, if I'm honest with you. Because it's been so suppressed for so long and there's so much programming going on here that it feels like It feels like everything in me is screaming because I've been taught for so long to not be myself, to be anything but myself. So hi, my name is Missy Gordon. Nice to meet you. This is me. I love you guys. I hope today's episode helped you think about your own self. If you'd like to support the channel, as always, you can purchase merch or you can donate links in the description below. And I will see you next time. Take care.